aging face that this world has forgotten. Mm. What is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better? And this time we're looking upon actually the Generation 7's basically main bug Pokemon of this generation. And yes, I will say main bug, even though Buzzful and Fermosa clearly dominate that kind of category. But yeah, the water bug type combination with Araquanid versus Golisopod, this is a type of combination that has not been done a lot, actually only alone by Surskit for Generation 3, and have not been done right really till this generation, so when these two got introduced I was really happy, and they're having similar traits, but at the same time, then doing things differently, and hopefully with this end of the video we will have of course a result here of which Pokemon does its job better, because it's a unique type of combination, and there are a lot of perks with this type of combination, which we're of course gonna go over before we of course start comparing them. So of course, first and foremost, the typing combination itself. Bug and Water is a very very strong typing combination, mainly because they do resist a lot of relevant things. The thing standing out the most is of course it resists finding ground and ice, while it does resist steel and water, they are not as offensively common as, of course, finding ground and ice is. And that type of combination, in general, offensively, shakes a lot of things and actually does super effective damage on most teams very, very well. So having a type of combination that does resist that combination alone, yeah, that's a very, very good perk in making these two Pokemon, of course, superb defensively. Though they're weak to actually three things that are quite common. One of them, of course, being rocks. Rock typing is definitely one of the worst combination of typing to be weak to, and definitely, of course, since you're supposed to soak. Other than that, of course, electric and flying are standing out. Electric and flying can easily be, of course, wheeled down. But, of course, a hazard in rocks always is an issue, no matter what team, really. And you, of course, have to build with that in mind when you're actually using these Pokemons. So with that said, we're gonna actually go over their stats before the abilities, because there are a lot more things to be said about their abilities. So, defensively, of course, we're in the HP stats. The Goliathspot does stand out a little bit, 75 compared to 68. That does kind of open up, of course, Goliathspot being slightly bulkier. And then it comes to attack stats, where you guys can definitely see Goliathspot triumph, or even mountains over, of course, Araquanid. Uh, 125 compared to 70, yeah, that's a very, very big difference. And then, of course, it comes to defenses, 140 on Goliath Spot versus 92 on Arachnid. While, of course, 92 on Arachnid is not a bad defensive stat, it's very clear that 140 is a lot more. Uh, special attack, Goliath Spot is by default stronger there too, <laughs> even though it's not by a lot, of course, 60 compared to 50. Special defense is kind of where they flip, where, of course, Arachnid has 132 over Goliath Spot's of course, defense of 90. Trust me though, Knight in Special Defense is still a lot, but Rackwood is 122, clearly a lot more. So there are fifth flip when it comes to defensive stats, of course, that Elias one has more defense, or of course, Arachnid is Special Defense. And then of course, when it comes to speed stats, are really, really similar, but Arachnid is slightly faster with 42 versus, of course, 40. So they're not the speediest kind of Pokemon, and quite frankly, comparing that they are most used for defensive capabilities, the speed isn't mattering too much, though it is unfortunate that they aren't faster, and definitely sometimes need more investment than others. But with that said, we're of course going to go over their abilities. I'm going to start with Golisopod having, of course, Emergency Exit. Emergency Exit can activate one time, which when you are below 50%, you will automatically switch out. Which on paper doesn't sound too bad, but at the same time, and this is probably one thing that I think most people will agree on, with those defensive stats and offensive presence, it's unfortunate that a Pokemon of this caliber forces itself out, and most certainly with Stealth Rocks in mind. That definitely lowers the stamina of a Pokemon that clearly has a lot of stamina, and it's a very, very big drawback for Golisopod, and clearly, Emergency Exit can be used in its, uh, for its perks too, because it is a hassle stacker and has a, a very, very good move that only forces it to be able to be forced out in the first place, but only Emergency Exit is definitely holding it to some extent back. And then of course we have Araquanid's ability. Water Absorb, nothing to it. You get 25% of your HP back if you're hit with of course a water type move. Fairly good, honest opinion, that's a very good ability. But what makes Araquanid a lot better is Water Bubble. Water Bubble as an ability is a very, very strange one at that because it does, does serve two kinds of purposes. First of all, you can't get burned. 
So it works pretty much like the uh, Watermobile is doing, which is one of the best abilities in the game if you are a physical attacker. And as you guys can see, 70 attack, yeah, doesn't force that physical attack stat that much. Well, here comes the second ability of the, of course, Water Bubble. Your Water Stab gets, of course, a boost, such, of course, adaptability, making your stabs even stronger, get a 100% boost to your Water Attack before stabs, making moves such, of course, Liquidation, a very, very high damaging move, even more damaging than from Offensive Goliathopod, which is kind of strange, consider, of course, that Goliathopod actually is 55 base attack stronger than actually Arachnid, but that individual move is definitely where Arachnid does stand out. Granted, Goliathopod's overall damage output is higher than Arachnid, but having to spam, of course, water moves in such a ferocious nature making Arachnid really really interesting when it comes to an offensive attacker and plus on the plus side of course it can't get burned with this ability in mind. So with that said we're of course gonna go over the remove pool. I'm gonna start with Goliath Support mainly because it actually has a lot of niches going on even though it is so slow. First of all it does get its signature move of course first impression which is of course a base 90 move with um, plus 2 priority, which is a very very strong, very dangerous move, consider of course it's high attack stat. Um, outside of that, of course, it should be mentioned it only works once per switching, which of course forces a little bit with of course the merge exit in mind to be a bit more dangerous. Outside of that, it does get Sucker Punch and of course Aqua Jet as priority. Outside of that, it does have a lot of filler moves, of course Liquidation being stronger though, it get, does get Leech Life, but of course uh, raises its stamina a bit longer, and it does lack recovery, but gets, of course, Air Lays, Rock Tomb, and Shadow Claw, and, of course, actually, Sword Stance, which is a very, very interesting move, together with, of course, a Brick Rate and Bulk Up. So, there are a lot of things going on with Goliath's pod that can push its stamina a little bit. It should be noted that the Merge Exit, for example, do not activate if um, you are behind a sub, and actually, you reduce below 50% with sub in mind. Which of course pushes the boundary a little bit with Goliath's plus initiatives going on. And of course you can only activate the emergency exit once, which could mean that you could actually heal yourself up with of course a wish or a healing wish and actually use this as a setup. It does also get spikes, which is definitely one of the biggest perks, mainly because it means that you can set up spikes before you're forced out, which is also a very very strong capability of these Pokemon, even though as stated, emergency exit at time definitely hold Goliath's spot back, but at the same time it is also a strong strategic opportunity since of course you can actually spam first impression more often than not. And now of course Arachnid's move pool. And Arachnid's move pool is not as diverse as Golisopod, but in my honest opinion just as relevant. It has different things going on that pushes the boundary of this Pokemon really can be. First and foremost of course Liquidation clearly. Liquidation that strong water based move which of course really really pushes the boundary of how strong a water attack move really can be. But outside of that it does also get Lunge, which is a new bug type move this generation, which of course lowers your opponent's attack set by 1, as it is just as strong as the Leech Life of course of 80 base power. And consider of course that Arachnid's special defense are so high, Lunge definitely pushes the boundary of how much punishment this Pokemon can take without actually falling. And of course clearly I said that Leech Life, uh, it also gets Crunch, Poison Jab, uh, has filler moves such of course Reflect Scald and uh, also get of course Soak and Soak is very very good to consider of course that it makes even Poison type being able to actually be poisoned and of course the opponent loses their possible stabs. Outside of that it does get Stockpile and a combination that follows with which of course Spit Up. The reason when you use Stockpile in this particular Pokemon is though is that it's getting of course clearly a lot of defense but also that the C move Stockpile does make yourself recover some HP. This is the only way that should be stated that this Pokemon can get HP, but of course, going to Goliathopod, it is actually getting HP, which is something that they're both lacking. They both lack proper recovery, and it is an issue with the type of combination themselves, consider, of course, how defensively interesting they are. So with that said, we're now going to go over the course after Foss and which Pokemon really is better, and... Um, it might sound simple on paper, and it's, I know a lot of people are really made up their mind. Goliathopod has been a disappointment, disappointment for a lot of people for quite some time, but people are forgetting that Goliathopod just pushes the boundary with priority, with setup, and of course with being able to actually be forced out and only be forced to do that once. With the right synergy, Goliathopod can be incredibly scary, 
but Raccoonage, for example, will always be scary. While they're both are way to rocks, I really have to, of course, go into the deep and be very, very honest to myself and say, while I do like, <laughs> by design, uh, Goliath a lot more than Raccoonage, Araquanid is basically what this typing needed to be, and quite honestly, it needed to have some possibility recovery, And but that is not the reason Araquanid wins this matchup. The Water Bubble ability is a, such a good ability for an offensive Pokemon, such of course Araquanid's caliber, with of course Liquidation in mind, that even if of course Glyzobot is extremely dangerous by default, with of course the first impression, Sucker Punch, Aqua Jet can be extremely dangerous to deal with when it comes to priority types attacks. Araquanid is just so much more dangerous by default and of course just a liquidation spam are enough to actually eradicate a lot of teams so easily and of course its stats doesn't look as intimidating but this two Pokemon don't necessarily die and if you have a damage output so high as of course Araquanid had by default without being forced to use the likes of priority then yes Araquanid has to be of course the winner of this matchup. But I will say this, Golisopod can be more diverse than Arachnid is, the spike set is definitely up there, and of course a Salt Vest version would of course a full offensive nature one and using Leech Slap to actually try to recover yourself, yeah it's not bad, but at the same time, it doesn't have enough damage output to do that well, even with of course setup in mind. I do believe had Golisopod not had emergency exit, this outcome would have been much much different, because you can be weak to rocks. Uh, or you can't be weak to rocks and be forced out and coming in again. There are so much loss in HP with that in mind and you're so easy to whittle down that Araquanid by default becomes much more dangerous because it can actually set up, get more defensive, it can actually recover with of course the C move in mind and just keep on coming. Goliathbot are eventually forced to be <laughs> out of the battle and when it is and comes back and I've lost by default even more percent of its HP, it is it is hard to work with. It's even worse when you consider that you actually would not maybe switch it out beforehand and actually switches in to stealth rocks and be forced up emergency exit yet again. It is just such a devastating ability that I don't think any team could work around that properly and have Goliath Sport coming out on top. I'm not saying Goliath Spot is bad though, but the ability definitely is holding it back. I don't believe it if it didn't have an ability it could very well be considered a lot better than Arachnid because the stats are there. It is just the um, complexity of keeping this Pokemon afloat that is its main issue and its drawback when it comes to this matchup. Arachnid has the ability to be a threat from turn 1 and while Goliathspot has the same thing going on, it does have too many issues to be relevant in the long run. So of course with that said guys, what do you guys think? I mean, I, I really felt that, you know, it focused a lot of why Goliath's part isn't working, and I do believe it's a very unfair to Raconid, but all boils down to this, it is no comparison, in my honest opinion, Raconid just triumphs on the things that matters, and this reason it wins in the, in the end of things. I really, really prefer Goliath's part as an individual Pokemon, but it has just that big of an issue to make it relevant, and I feel that that's just an unfortunate crowd of events. Now, of course, with that said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode anyway, and look forward to next week where we will be looking upon, actually, these guys.